same old shit, just a different day. I'm clocking in and clocking out to keep the bills paid. Bills paid. At this nine to five, temporary lay. If you're not trying to live your dream, we are not the same. Same old shit, just a different Greetings, day. Redheads. Thank you for joining me in another episode of the one and only your favorite show, which is Red's View. I have a special guest right here. He goes by the name of Kyrae Richards. Now, he is a filmmaker, producer, writer, uh, actor, director, like so many titles. Like, you know, this dude is very, very influential to a lot of people. And I'm honored to have you on the show with me. Right? Yes, I'm honored to be here. I appreciate yeah. you having me out. Definitely, definitely. So uh, let's go ahead and get into it. What inspired you to be a filmmaker? What inspired me to be a filmmaker? Well, growing up and even still now, I love watching Disney movies. <laughs> yeah, I got I got a soft I place. That one. I got a soft place for Disney movies, and growing up, I always imagined good stories. But I never wrote any of them. I never played them out. I didn't think it was possible for me. Right. And then in college, uh, my fiance now, she was always out there doing stuff like photography and all that. Right. And I was that guy that was watching Tarzan in his dorm room, <laughs> and so just watching her on her grind really uh, motivated me to get out of my room and start doing things for myself. So I started writing. And I started. Got me a small little camera and I was filming events and then as I started filming events I thought well, I can make these stories come to life and so I started making course stories come to life. And so I, I contributed to both my love for Disney movies and also my fiance. Oh. It really motivated me to keep going and actually building stuff for myself. So. Ah, so you had a black woman. Yeah, me a black woman now. Yeah, hey man, you gotta love your black woman. Shout out to the sisters out there. So that's what's up. So uh, with you being a filmmaker, what type of films do you make? And like name some of the films that you put out there in the universe. Films I've made, uh, let's see, well the films I put out in the universe, I have my first official one called Short Change. Uh, that's just about a man who was on the wrong end of the train tracks one day, essentially. Uh, um, we have a One Too Many, which hey, is- One Too Many is dope, y'all. Y'all yeah. need to check that out. Yeah. yeah, One Too Many is that one that finally uh, gave me that breakthrough I was looking for. I haven't won any awards yet, but I've been nominated for a few, or selected in some film festivals. So that definitely up. got me motivated to do better films now. Um, but the films I make before this transition I just went through, which is basically for entertainment, just something to add a little twist and. I throw people off their game when they're watching my film, but now I'm actually working on scripts that are thought-provoking and make people actually want to take action in the community mm -hmm. or just look at things they hadn't taken time to look at before and the smaller things. Uh, reading up on books has helped me with the story and developing the story so that it's not just for entertainment, but people can walk away and saying, wow, I never thought about that, or wow, I actually forgot all about that. So just something that would impact people's minds to want to watch it again and again and get that hard driving message. Definitely, definitely. And uh, can you elaborate a little bit more on how you started everything? Like, I know you said you started with a small camera, but um, like, what's the first film that you actually produced? The first film I actually produced, the world will never see. <laughs> Boy, that, the world, I, I probably don't even have that film anymore. It oh, was, man. I appreciate all my friends that helped me out with that one, but that one will never see the light. Maybe we're going to find it on eBay one Never going to never. <laughs> Maybe, maybe all right. not find it on eBay. I will I feel sue you. somebody on that one. I feel you. Um, yeah, but yeah. Just, just from my upbringings for that, how I all got started, actually, the idea I had, which is, again, my official first short was short change mm -hmm. I was doing um, a project with my friend Danny and my friend Trey uh, both one is an actor one is a director and I both still great filmmaker shout out to y'all yeah and um, we were trying to brainstorm just a short that we could do it's just the summertime and we had nothing to do so we were brainstorming it and I had this idea that I pitched to him but we ultimately went with uh, Trey's idea which still did good it won some film festivals so shout out to that mm -hmm. but then years later as again I got better cameras and better material and understood story and filmmaking I said let me try this one out. It ended up being a black and white film. I shot right there by Georgia State University in like three locations. Shout out to Georgia and State. Shout out to Georgia State, of course. Uh, that's right. in the land. Oh, uh, and from there, again, I just shot that one in one day. And I was actually shooting another film later that day, which ended up, ended up being shot because it was just a long, yeah. long shooting day. But um, that's where it started right there, just having an idea that I chose to circle back around to and elaborate on. And it, again, it's a great piece. I still love it to the And day. see, the most important thing you said right there is having an idea. You know, once you have that idea, I encourage everybody to like uh, try to capitalize off of that mm -hmm. because you never know that song that you want to record, that book you want to write, you know, that party you want to host or that movie that you want to make it end up doing big things. You no, know what he's, saying? Right, he's right, because one of the things I was actually thinking about earlier is that don't mistake an underdeveloped idea as a bad idea. Mm -hmm. You can have a solid idea, and even though it's not panning out, whether it's a script, whether it's a book you're writing, whether it's some lyrics you're writing, a poem you're writing, an idea you just have, but just because it doesn't seem good 
right there and then doesn't mean it's a bad idea. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean it's going to fail. You have to take the time to develop it. And as you develop it one piece at a time, one day at a time, it can grow into something big. Indeed. I'm Indeed. pretty sure Ryan Coogler didn't just wake up and say Black Panther's going to have this, this, and this. I'm pretty sure it was underdeveloped at some time, but you got to take the time to develop it. You got to take a risk. You never know where it's going to go. Definitely. So what is success to you? Success. Yeah, to and me. the reason I just want to get that out there because a lot of people may look at success as getting a million dollars or actually signing to a record label or getting their film produced by this big, big movie. But I'm a firm believer that success is what you make it or what you think that it is. So, what do you think success is? So, let me ask before I answer that: Are you asking success in general, or success in filmmaking for me? Uh, we can do both. Success, so success in general first. So, success in general for me hmm, is being able be in a place in my life where I can provide for my family, mm. not just my immediate family, such as when I have kids and my wife, but being able to provide for my mother who's been there for me, my father who's been there for me, my family and anybody who's been there for me, just being able to just have that group of people around me and knowing that I made it to a place where I've worked hard, I've pushed hard, I've struggled a little bit, I've sacrificed and I made it to that place in life where I can say I'm at peace with where I am, I'm at peace with what I'm doing, and I can provide for those around me. Um, as far as filmmaking is concerned, in the future, and even now, I'm still working on it now, mm -hmm. having those films that are just thought-provoking films, such as Christopher Nolan. I look into Christopher Nolan. I love Christopher Nolan. <laughs> I will love Is that Nolan. So is that like hands down your favorite director? Hands down. Hands down. Hands down. Christopher no competition Nolan. for that. Hands down. Wow. Favorite director, favorite writer. Yeah. But having films that mimic his in the aspect that people want to watch it again because they thought they missed something. Yeah. Or every time you watch it, you got a different meaning from it. Or right. Interpret, you have your own interpretation each time you watch it. or just something that leaves you wondering, what did I miss? How did I miss this? How is this not applying to my life? I just want to make something out there that people can really just watch again and again oh, and again. And like over continue and over. to be entertained oh. over and years from now, like Inception. Prestige, all those great movies. Oh, no, I definitely think that you're on your way when it comes to that because uh, some of the films that you know I've been a part of, and mm -hmm. the one that I was supposed to be a part of—he's supposed to be a part of one too many. He, he ain't was supposed to be a part of one too many. He ain't supposed to. He was supposed to be a part of. He chickened out on me. I chickened he out. Chickened man. out on I me. I chickened out. But I scheduled conference. Yeah, yeah, all that <laughs> stuff. But anyway, but yeah, like just seeing that script and how it developed, and me seeing the finished product of it, I was just like, man, you know, because it's one thing to actually being something, but when you just look back and know the story, mm -hmm. and then you see how it came out, man, that was just so impactful, and I gotta give you props to that. Man. I appreciate Real dope, and I hope that you know that continues to get more and more success. I hope that. Uh, so I you said Ryan, uh, not Ryan Cooper, but Chris Nolan. Chris Nolan. Who is second best to you? Second best? Is it like Spike Lee? Is it? So I don't really have. Aside from Christopher Nolan, which is going to sound kind of contradictory, I don't have a best aside from Christopher Nolan. <laughs> I what feel I have, you though. Yeah. I have people who I I look up to for different aspects. I have the writing styles of Christopher Nolan. I have the dialogue of Andy. Sorkin, I believe his name, the guy who wrote Social Network and A Few Good Men. Mm -hmm. I have the uh, the drama of Tarantino, um, the inspiration of Ryan Coogler as a black filmmaker. And he only made three movies, but he's still out here just changing the game. It was only like, three? He's only made Fruitvale Station, wow. Black Panther, and Creed. Wow. And you wouldn't believe that based on his repertoire. Yeah, because right I thought he would have made at least five of them. No, his three. third movie is a billion dollar movie, just like that. So I look yeah. at the people like that and I try to take each aspect of that and try to incorporate it into my own style. So as far as like the best, this and that, I look up to Christopher Nolan, I look up to different people for different aspects. Indeed, indeed. Yes, indeed, family. Uh, so, what, are, what is your favorite movie of all time? Inception. Inception. <laughs> he didn't down. take this dude no type of Hands time down. or anything. He just Inception already. Hands down. Hands down. Uh, and so, as a writer, because people don't understand that, you know, directing, writing, producing, they, it comes with a lot of that. It does. So, where do you get your ideas from when it comes to writing? Like, you know everyday life or like what is it so when it comes to writing i wish i could explain it in a way people would understand well creatives can understand this you right. do music you do poetry you write books mm -hmm. anything you do you're just riding in the car one day and all of a sudden i just see a scene playing out in front of me i see okay for example short change i see a man being chased by somebody and so i just watch it in my head as it's playing out i've never seen this before mm -hmm. and so i'm seeing he's, he's Gun down. Okay, why is he gunned down? Let's start reversing the story. And then I see another man. Okay, well, what did this man do? This man gave him some money. So the guy who shot him got the wrong guy in the whole situation. So really when it comes to the storytelling aspect, I don't 
really know where it comes from. It's, it's almost as if it drops out of thin air. It's like a, uh, a film yeah. just starts playing in my head that I've never seen before. Yeah. And that's always the best feeling because as I'm watching it in my head for the first time, I'm reacting like, oh shit, oh my gosh, I can, can I curse on the show? No, yeah, yeah. Okay, oh shit, definitely. oh my gosh, I can't believe he shot him. I can't believe this happened. And so at that point, as a writer, I have to explore why all this happened. And as I'm just listening to the dialogue, as I'm watching the story play out, I'm just expanding it little by little until eventually I have this overall story that yeah. it is now up to me to write and bring out to the world. Right. So where it comes from, I honestly cannot say that's that's a God given thing. That is just creativity that yeah. drops into your mind the same way that rappers can just Yeah, it just see comes lyrics. Up. like it's nothing. It's like yeah. I don't see where that comes from. When I started writing in uh college like full time, mm -hmm. like it just those ideas would just pour out of, out of nowhere and it's hard mm -hmm. to explain where it comes from. So do you ever get afraid one day that you'll lose that? See I don't believe I believe I have a gift. I'm not going to downplay it as if I don't, mm -hmm. but I don't believe I have the gift in where it can be taken from me to write the story. Because again, I can't go home right now and just go, if God so wills it, I could go home and write a whole feature. Uh, but I can't just thing. go home right now and literally put all this stuff on paper and think it's going to be great. It's just something that's given to me out of nowhere. Like I said before, it just drops into my head and I'm watching it for the first time. So mm -hmm. if you consider that as being the gift, then yeah, I'm afraid I might lose that one day. So I'll take advantage of writing it now. Exactly. But if it is not a gift and it's just something that God is just asking me to do, then it's mm -hmm. going to keep happening. Mm -hmm. And here at Resview, we like to uh, give exposure to people. So how can people, like if they want to be a part of your film, uh, and do you have just a set cast or do you have it open for anybody, like if there's any aspiring actress and a actors and actresses out there, like can they be a part of your project? Well, I'm working on developing a crew right now. I'm working on <laughs> developing a crew right now, um, but I'm always open and open to uh, new actors and actresses, people who want to direct, people who want to write, people who want to film. I'm just trying to make sure everybody in the film community gets their opportunity. Right. Um, everybody is moving to Atlanta, so it's about to be oh, man. It's not already overcrowded. Um, and it, it's just that thing where a lot of filmmakers just want to work on their own, right. not understanding that, as the thing Issa Rae said, we got to reach out and I just reach up. And so um, yeah. I'm always open to new ideas. I'm always open to new people. Um, should I give out like my Instagram and stuff like that? Now? Well, yeah, I was going to say that. But go ahead. Since we're already uh, <laughs> on it, like where can people find you on social media? Give us all of that. Well, social media, uh, Kyrae Richards, uh, K-H-I-R-A-Y dot Richards. You can find that on Instagram. I'm probably the only Kyrie Richards in the world, so <laughs> you can find me on Facebook in the same way, and that's that's going to be me right there overall. Okay, cool. Now, um, I wanted to know, um, as far as like your films go, um, how can people check those films out? Because I know you released one that was on your Instagram page. Uh, you clicked the link in the bio. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any other sample films? I know sometimes you can't release the whole thing, but right. yeah, how can people check out some of your work? Well, like YouTube? You, you know. can check out my website. KyrieRichards.com, K-H-I-R-A-Y, Richards.com. It's all there. I do weddings. That's on there. I got regular filmmaking, which we're talking about now, so that's the focus. So my films will be on that as well. Uh, Lost Ace Films is what I've called it, and that's what I've transitioned to, Lost Ace Films. Before you get up out of here, so I, I have a, a scenario. Okay. I'm an aspiring filmmaker. I really want to do it, but I don't know where to start. Like, how would you give, what, what advice would you give to an aspiring filmmaker, like the first few steps? Like, what well, I heard Les Brown say it best. You got to do what you can, where you are with what you have. And so if all you have is a phone and you have some friends or family that support you, then you go out there and shoot that film. Mm. Uh, you just, I think he said, you don't have to be great to get started, but you got to get started to be great. Oh, so, I mean, we all going to start advice. from the bottom. We're all going to struggle. We're all have to sacrifice, but it's better you get started now than waiting until you have that opportunity. Yeah, that's what's up, man. Thank you for coming on the show again. You know, we're going to be working and doing a whole lot of stuff. Yeah. Even though he chose the wrong fraternity to to be a part of. But anyway, that's J Red. You already got his info if you need to. Listen uh, to the name of the show, J Red. Come on now. Of yeah. course, he's biased about it. It's Red's View, actually. A5, baby. Hey, A5. Hey, anyway. A5. But anyway, you already know it's the noobs all day in this thing. But anyway, that's J Red from Red's View. If you need to follow me, if you're going to follow me, it's at J A Y R 3D. Uh, subscribe and hit that alert button. That's right, that alert button to youtube.com slash We Authentic Network. Also, we're in conjunction with 106 Live Radio, so, you know, get the app downloaded and everything like that. But that's J Red, this is Kai Ray, checking out. Same Red. Old shit, just a different day. I'm clocking in and clocking out to keep the bills paid. Bills paid. At this nine to five, temporarily. If you're not trying to live your dream, we are not the same.
Same old shit, just a different day. I'm clocking in and clocking out to keep the bills paid. Bills paid. At this nine to five, temporary lay. If you're not trying to live your dream, we are not the same. Oh no, we are not the same. We don't have the same thought patterns. No. I'm trying to fly up to the sky while you climb the ladder. Yeah. I'm on a different path while you staying in your lane. Instead of buying a ticket, I'd rather be on stage. You'd rather follow procedures while I would take a chance. I'd rather find a for myself. Something wondering what if you'd rather have a salary with 401k.